Okay, Genesis 1.26. We're going to look at Genesis 1.26 here. It says, in Genesis 1.26, God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Now, some have come to believe that this means God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit had a council together. And they said, let us make man in our image. And um, I'd like to... I'd like to go through a couple of quotes here first and then we'll look at the scriptures and compare them and see what it talks about in regards to creation. The Bible is very clear about who said to who. Now, let's look at this quote from Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 1, page 24 and 25. And it says, After the earth was created and the beasts upon it, the Father and Son carried out their purpose, which was designed before the fall of Satan, to make man in their own image. They had wrought together in the creation of the earth and every living thing upon it. And now God says to his son, let us make man in our image. Now you'll notice here that there's two beings. The father and son carried out their purpose. So there is a plurality here. There's two. And they said to each, God said to his son. Now who is God in this quote? It says God says to his son, let us make man in our image. If there's two beings here and one is the son, and God is saying to his son, I think we can easily conclude that it's God the Father who said to his son, and not God the Trinity or God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This verse in Genesis 1.26 is referring to God the Father alone. We're going to look at some scriptures and compare them with this quote from the Spirit of Prophecy, which plainly tells us that God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit did not say to his son. It's not teaching that. Let's look at Ephesians 3 verse 9. And it says in Ephesians 3 verse 9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So God created all things by Jesus Christ, his Son. And um, I'd like to also look at one quote by James White. It says, um, The inexplicable trinity that makes the Godhead three in one and one in three is bad enough, but that ultra-unitarianism that makes Christ inferior to the Father is worse. Did God say to an inferior, let us make man in our image? James White, November 29th, 1877 in the Review and Herald. And um, the answer to James' question is no. God said to his son, and his son was exalted to equality. If we f read in um, Philippians 2, it says that he was in the form of God and equal with God, and God the Father exalted him. Now, Let's look at 1 Corinthians 8, 6 and look a little more at this creation. And um, let's see who God is here and uh, who Christ is. What's Christ's identity? In 1 Corinthians 8, 6 it says, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him. So everything comes from the Father. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So everything is by his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Notice it doesn't say one God the Father and one God Jesus Christ. It also doesn't say one God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit there of whom are all things. It says one God the Father of whom are all things. And one Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord, the Bible says. We're to confess he's Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that's what it says also in Philippians chapter 2. So we have one God the Father, the source of whom are all things. We're going to look at this a little more closely, this creation. Now let's look a little more at G Christ's relationship to God. Who is Christ to God? Let's look at Colossians 1, verse 15 to 17. And it says, Who is the image of the invisible God? Now we were created in the image of God. And this also says that Christ is the image of the invisible God. And it says He is the firstborn of every creature. There's more to Christ than, than just the image he's the firstborn and the Bible also says he's the only begotten of, of God and it says in the next verse by him were all things created that are in heaven that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist so you remember we read in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, it says, One Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things. So by Christ, God, the Father, the only true God, created all things. And um, that's how God does everything, by His Son, Jesus Christ. It says Christ, in that quote, is the image of God. So that's His relationship to God. He's the firstborn of God. God is His Father. 
And God created all things by our Lord and His Son, our brother, Jesus Christ. One God the Father, of whom are all things, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things. So it's very clear here that Genesis 1.26 is not teaching us that God's created man in their image. It's speaking of God created man in His image, and He said to His Son, who is the express image, let us create man in our image. God is the Father alone here. Let's look at Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. And um, this will be the last passage, just another one, to look at the creation and see how clear it is that the Father and Son carried out their purpose. And um, God is a Father alone here. Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. It says, God who at sun-dried times in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So, or worlds, sorry. So by whom are all things? Christ, his Son. Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So who is the majesty on high here? Is none other than the Father. He is the King. He is the Ancient of Days. And when we look to the sanctuary, which a lot of Adventists are not doing right now, we see that on this throne sits the Almighty One, the Ancient of Days. And on his right hand sits his Son, and on, there's no other being there. There's only two, the Father and Son alone. And uh, by beholding this, we can become changed into His image. We get to know God much more clearly by knowing wh who He is and what He gave. In, and what He gave to His Son, in, in, in His only begotten Son. And uh, this is just a look at Genesis 1.26. And I just pray that we all understand that the term God is not used in any any sense to refer to gods or plurality. This is used to refer to the Father alone. Please visit the thirdangelsmessage.com.